This episode is brought to you by Mantis Sleep. We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be learning about only through textbooks and TV. After spending another few weeks touring Southeast Asia and then a couple of weeks exploring the cultures of India, we're now halfway across the Pacific on the island of Oahu. It's our first time here together, but after I flew out last month to free dive with sharks for Reagan's 16th birthday, I knew I had to bring E, B, and C back to see why I fell instantly in love with the island. This Hawaiian hotspot is famous around the world for everything from its numerous filming locations for the Jurassic Park movie franchise, to the North Shore birthplace of big wave surfing, to being ground zero for the Pearl Harbor attack that brought the U.S. into World War II. But its food scene is also one of the best in the world. From its Polynesian roots, to its Asian influences, to its global imports, the variety is almost unequaled, and the flavors are fantastic. If you're not already hungry, you're about to be, because we're taking you on an all-day tour in search of the most mouth-watering sights and bites on the island. Let's get to it. Starting off with what Hawaii is best at, nature. We're at Kualoa Ranch, and this is where a lot of movies were made, including Jurassic Park. What other movies? Some uh, other Jurassic Park 2, <laughs> <laughs> world domination, I don't know. First thing we need to do is check in up here. We had to make reservations. You can't just show up, uh, so go online first. But look at these views. This is gorgeous, and I can't wait to get in there and learn a lot more about it. This is a 4,000-acre private reserve and a 600-head working cattle ranch. But we're going to put ourselves to work and get our hands dirty here. That's what we like to do. There's a lot of giant Madagascar day geckos here because they're invasive here, and I did not know that. I love that he has such a pure passion for lizards. Everywhere we go, and it's just like it's so genuine. He just wants to learn and soak up as much as possible. So, this is pretty amazing. I didn't realize how many movies were filmed here, and these are all the stars that have visited here while filming. And the different movies Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates, No Clue, Snatched was filmed here, Lost, of course, a lot of the movies from the Jurassic Park franchise. Uh, Triple Frontier, I really like that movie. Battleship Skull Island, Kong Skull Island, the Magnum P.I.s, the new one and the old one. It's the Trinoceros Rex. We're doing a Care for the Land tour because it's about getting our hands dirty and helping out getting into some of the farming and understanding how they do that, which of course is right up our family's alley. But there are a lot of other tours you can do here also. You've got the Zipline tour, you've got the Jurassic Adventure tour, the Movie Sites tour, Jungle Expedition tour, horseback tours, and probably more than that. Yeah, there's also an ocean voyage tour, but I'm glad Phil picked the one for us. It's right up our alley. So let the tour begin. We've come up this mountain a little bit and it's giving us a different perspective. And now we're seeing that we're inside a volcano. This is the crater. So these mountains here shaped hundreds of thousands of years ago, a mega volcano, and the bay was actually the center of it. And over time, one side of it collapsed, and so that's why it's a bay now. Uh, but this is fascinating that these two rocks over here represent a god and a goddess, and across the bay, there's a turtle-shaped island. As soon as the sun starts to come up in the middle of his back, it looks like an erupting volcano. And then when the first light of the day comes up, it hits the god rock. The theme of this tour is malama, which is the Hawaiian word for farmers. That's the part we're playing today, starting with watering these really cool plants right here. Farmers were highly regarded in Hawaiian culture because they fed the people. They were also engineers and teachers and also doctors because food really heals people as well. So we're looking forward to our certificate at the end of this tour. We're gonna do some of our farming here at Hakipu'u, which means broken hills, and that ties back to the volcano we were talking about where some of it collapsed and made the bay. Look at me, I look like such a nerd out here in a poncho. Phil does too, but he's on the other side of the camera. So down here, we're looking at a few different stages of the gardening process for Kalo. But over here, they had to stop the process because an endangered bird laid some eggs in there. So hands off. And you can actually hear them. Ooh, heard 
something. You can actually hear them talking, chirping in there, so they're, they're at home. Kalo is a little bit like spinach, except for you cannot eat it raw. You have to boil the leaves or cook the leaves somehow. And we're gonna help over here prepare a new garden bed. First up, I have to take off my flip-flop because I'm gonna get pretty dirty. Get my hands, feet, all muddy. Oh! <laughs> this is deep, deep mud. Oh my gosh. I'm like not even putting full pressure on my foot here. So what we wanna do is we wanna take the silky mud here and smooth it on top. Oh, and if you find one of these, this is a nut that will plant a tree and we don't want that so we toss it aside. What we're doing, we're filling in the cracks, we're getting this soil prepared for the planting. It's a little bit like putting stucco on the outside of a building. So this is called the mudding process. Obvious reasons. <laughs> Once we're done with this, we cover it with newspaper which acts as a weed barrier just like under your mulch at home. Once that's ready to go, you can actually plant the little bulbs. It's kind of like planting tulip bulbs, I think. You do a little PVC pipe to put a hole about five inches deep all along the mound, and then you put the top chunk of like this potato-like root structure from the plant down in there, cover it with mud, and then in a, just a few days, it'll start sprouting leaves at the top. Each one of the mounds can hold probably a dozen or so of these little bulbs. You gotta leave room for the babies because they start to reproduce and spread, so you need to leave room for those. You know what's funny? Is that Colt is not farming right now. He's looking for toads and lizards, and I promise he will be just as muddy as I am. We're gonna get cleaned up now at the stream. The stream is a natural stream, and it actually comes from mountain over there and runs all through this ranch down here, and it's what they use to irrigate all the farming they do. Since Colt and I have to wash off, we're actually giving back the land again because the mud we have on our legs is very nutritious and it feeds the fish. So we're coming full circle all over the place. Here we go. Thank you, baby. Oh my gosh. Of course the rain starts pouring down. But hey, it's nature. So this is Kalo, which is also called taro. And that is an ancient ingredient that Hawaiians have been using on this island since the first settlers. It's something that you can break down into a paste, which is poi, and that is used in a lot of cooking here in Hawaii. It has like a potatoey taste to it. No? I mean, and these are dried bananas. So before Hawaiians had refrigeration, it was a common practice to dry some of your food, your fish, or your fruit, like the bananas, to preserve them. Monkeys need the bananas. Here's more, the monkey. Very good, very sweet. Now under normal circumstances, I would say that this is a very touristy kind of activity to do. In reality, not at all. This is really getting behind the culture of the island and it is so cool to see how they farm, how they ranch, how they take care of the land, and to really be able to get in there and get our hands dirty and do some of the same stuff. If you're ever on Oahu, I gotta tell you, this is a must-do activity, so you gotta make it here. We're in downtown Honolulu, which is the capital of Hawaii, and we're at Ala Moana Shopping Center, which is the largest open-air shopping center in the world. And the last time I was out here, we went to this incredible bakery that was up the coast at their original location. We're gonna go to the same bakery, but a different location right here in the Ala Moana Shopping Center. This is Laliha Bakery. The original opened in 1950, and this is their third location, and that opened in 1929. Nope, that opened in 2019. <laughs> Can I please get three Cocoa Puffs okay. and one Poi Donut? They're really well known for their Cocoa Puffs and their Poi Donuts. Those two items are two of the most popular on the menu. And the Poi Donut is really interesting to me because Poi is a paste made from taro root and it has a sweet and sour taste to it. And it's the base for a lot of cooking here. But you can also eat it on its own. This purple stuff inside, that is the poi. Look how it stretches apart when you try to pull it. I actually have to put some work into it. Ugh. Poi is considered a sacred dish. The taro plant is believed to have the spirit of Haola, the child of two Hawaiian gods. There's so much buoyancy to this donut. Really, really interesting texture. I like it. It's like a gummy. You have cocoa all over your fin, bud. I know. I got it all over me. It's very chocolatey. It's like a pudding. So much chocolate. You know what? This is really heavy. 
it's not like a light pastry. It's actually got some weight to it. And then there's like a, a creamy uh, filling that's on the top. And the actual filling is the cocoa inside. Mm. Mm. Oh my God, thank God. I was over the box. This is really, really cold, and the chocolate inside tastes like a Wendy's Frosty. It's like a really light cocoa taste. It's not like a rich, dark chocolate at all. And the top is more of a grainy caramel taste to it, like a raw sugar caramel. Good combination all of it together. But messy, eat over a plate or a box. Well, a very delicious start to the day. But we're heading to get some more pastries at a place just down the street. We do need to grab the car for that. Are you tired of buying what look like normal size sleep masks online only to find out that you bought a miniature version instead? Or one that's made for people with three eyes? Have you had enough of sleep masks that are too slippery to hold on to? Or so cheap and flimsy that they don't block enough light no matter what you do? Who needs it? There has to be a better way! Now there is! Introducing Manta Sleep, the world's most innovative sleep mask system with naptastic features like 100% blackout for a deeper sleep, infinite adjustability for a personalized fit, zero pressure on your precious peepers, and countless options to suit even the most discerning sleepers like pro masks for side sleepers, cooling eye cups to relieve swelling and pain, max cups for people with bigger eyes and lashes, and so much more. Manta Sleep is the only eye mask endorsed by the Lockwood family. Get yours today! Order today through the link on your screen or in the description below. Use promo code ALWAYS10 to get 10% off your order. Avoid using while operating heavy machinery. Excessive use will not cause vomiting. Do not use if you have more than two eyes. Not intended for use as a bondage accessory. Although Aaron and Phil have found it works quite well as one. Do not combine with other eye masks. Do not skip this ad. You might see malasadas on a lot of bakery menus around Oahu, but it all started here because of Leonard and his heritage. Leonard opened this bakery in 1952, but his grandparents are the first ones who moved over to Hawaii from Portugal, and that was in the late 1880s. As you can see by this very big line, they are really popular, and most people are here to have their malasadas, which is a Portuguese treat that they made for Strove Tuesday. Leonard's mother recommended it so that he could honor his heritage, but it became very popular and now they make it around the clock. It's actually a little hidden secret. If you don't want to wait in the line, you can just call ahead, order your malasadas, but you require at least, I think, a couple of dozen to be able to do that, and then you can go straight to the cashier, bypass everybody. Who wouldn't want a couple of dozen? You know, you could buy a couple of dozen and then sell all the ones you don't want to eat to the other people waiting in line for a profit. That's why I married you, your brilliant business plans. Pretty sure it's gonna be worth the wait. We get uh, one cinnamon sugar malasada and one guava. They have a $5 minimum for credit card, so if you're only getting a couple of donuts, bring some cash. Malasada. Couple of malasadas, bring some cash. <laughs> there are two phases of waiting here. The first one is in the line to order, and the second one is to wait for your fresh made to order order to come up. Yeah, so all these people scattered around the parking lot, they're waiting for their order. Ah, 980, that's us. Go nuts, honey. Yeah. Okay, thanks, so. So I got cinnamon, and then called that one's yours. I got the guava. <laughs> Tastes like cinnamon. They're crispy on the outside, light and fluffy on the inside, and they're missing something. They're missing a hole. Brooklyn got the original, that's a, a typical malasada, and Colt got a, a puff filling, so he chose guava. The chickens are eating Colt's guava filling. I think I need a napkin. What? I was gonna break. I was gonna break this one into pieces. Like I had a big one in, in my hand. I was gonna break it into pieces. This guy just comes up and snatches it. You can't come to Honolulu and not go to Leonard's. It's an absolute staple and it's well worth the wait. Now we're going to take a little bit of a walk back up the hill to our car so we can burn off the calories from those pastries. We're gonna head up to the North Shore. This is Pa'alaka'i Bakery and it has something that is magical. I know it's another pastry, but it's well worth it. Let's grab some snow puffies. We're just gonna eat them on the trunk of our Tesla, which is our screaming deal rental that we got. We're Avis Chairman's Club members. That is through our Destination Club in Sperado. If you wanna learn more about that, go to followabc.com slash pass. But we booked this last minute and we saw it for $181 base price for three days. Stealing deal. Now let's eat some snow puffs. Oh wow, snow puffies. Cause look at all that powdered sugar on top. It is puff 
pastry with some cream filling, chocolate on top there, and then just covered in, oh God. Brooklyn is a snow puffy, because she's covered in it. Very puffy. Now I'm gonna try. I've gotta do the butt out, because I saw what Brooklyn did with all that powdered sugar. Mmm, it's so good. I love it when the cream and the inside is cold. It's almost like an ice creamy feeling. That is insanely flaky. And that's why when I take a bite, the powdered sugar just flies up everywhere. Mm. Ah! Ah! The powdered sugar is blowing into the kids. Okay, one last bite. Wow, this is an experience. I'm not sure you can eat it anywhere other than a parking lot because you'd make the biggest mess. The powdered sugar everywhere. What makes these so unusual and delicious is how the puff pastry really puffs up. I mean, these things are like 90% air. So when you take that bite, you feel like you're biting into a cloud. And then having the powdered sugar on top just makes it that much more like fluffy and powdery and soft and airy. So all you really get that's a difference in texture is gonna come from that custard inside that's very cold and sweet and dense. All right, my sweet tooth is done. It's time to go get something savory and there's a great place that's just a couple of minutes from here. This is the North Shore of Oahu, the birthplace of big wave surfing. If you haven't seen the movie Riding Giants yet, you gotta check it out. Changed my life, no joke. North Shore is also called the windward side, which means it's the side that is going to get the most wind, the most waves, and the most rain. So Waikiki Beach is actually leeward, so it gets a lot less rain and the waters are much calmer. Jenna has a shrimp truck. <laughs> there are a lot of shrimp trucks around here, but Jenny's is the best. That's what our niece told us and she's never wrong. Now it's my time to shine. We're gonna have something savory. It's gonna be a spicy garlic shrimp. I like it hot. Good morning. Can we get one spicy garlic shrimp? Something big to notice, since we left Honolulu, there are no lines at the two places we've been so far at North Shore. Another big difference is this place has a picnic table area so we can sit down properly to eat our food. I'm gonna bring my ticket so they don't give it to somebody else. All right, careful. Ha ha, look at that! It is hot, the plate is hot under there because they just made it. I think it's safe to say that this is just for us, the kids, are a little donutted out, and I don't know if they want the spicy shrimp. That sauce, there's a big sweet component to it. So now I'm excited to get it with the shrimp. The shell is still on, so there's a little bit of work to do. Phil actually usually peels my shrimp for me, but now that he has a camera, I have to do it myself. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. The shrimp is great, but the sauce, the spicy with the sweet, Pillar. Even comes with a little pineapple on the side and some greens that it goes on top of, but the star really is that shrimp with that sauce. It's the one to get. But we're gonna chow down on this and then we're gonna head to another place. We've been all over the island. We're back down in Honolulu and we're gonna have something that is synonymous with Hawaii itself and it's shave ice. Not shaved, shave ice. Welcome to Uncle Clay's house of pure aloha. Pure aloha oak. Put our hands over our hearts. I solemnly promise to live every heartbeat of my life from this day forward with pure aloha. Every single word that comes out of my mouth and every single action, be it large or small, must first come from my compassionate heart and be supported by my thoughtful mind. With an open heart and an open mind, I will unconditionally love every person who crosses my path in life as a fellow member of our One World Ohana. If I truly try my best to do all these things, I will become the person I was born to be filled with inner peace and complete happiness. Living every heartbeat with pure aloha, I can bring love to the hearts of others and make our world a better place. We would love a small classic rainbow with uh, extra ice cream. This is not what I expect when you hear shave ice. I expect like that little plastic or paper cone and then just the ice on top and then the colors going across, but this is a lot more than that. Shaved ice actually did not originate in Hawaii. It's an ancient Japanese treat. When Japanese laborers came from Okinawa and other parts of Japan to work in the sugarcane fields here, and that was in the early 1900s, and it was in the 1950s where they started making Japanese owned stores that would have shaved ice. Now it's just a Hawaiian staple. Everyone has to have it. Even Barack Obama has to have his shave ice when he comes to Hawaii. Ooh, that's pretty good. The ice cream kind of tastes like whipped cream. But this is just the shave ice part. Mm. 
That's good. It's pretty it flavorful. Like the ice cream is just ice cream, but the shave ice is fascinating. I don't even think I would really know right off the bat that it was ice. The sauces that he was putting on there for the rainbow effect, not just like juices or flavored sugar waters like you get with snow cones. It was like pureed fruit. If I didn't know better, I would think that maybe it was like frozen, chopped up chunks of very tiny fruit made into slush and then surrounded with these chunks of real fruit. It is a very unique dessert and not in any way, shape, or form similar to the snow cones that we get on the mainland. Now that we've polished that off and the rain is starting to come down, we're gonna head back to Ala Moana and do some indoor bites. Since it's starting to rain, we're gonna go catch some frogs. <laughs> yeah, how do you know your kids have had too much sugar? That's how you know. I hope our next stop is savory. This is a lot of sugar so far. Here we are back at Ala Moana and we're gonna stop at a grocery store of all places for our next bite. Yes, that's how good the grocery stores are here in Honolulu. They are on point, so we're gonna come in here and check out one of the most amazing little features that they have in this entire shopping center, which is the Poke Bowl Bar. Going into Foodland Farm. This is like a grocery mall. Hey guys, I need your help. We have to find the Poke Bar. Help us find it, okay? They're so friendly here. We might be on the right track. We have salad bars, fruit bars, sushi, uh, some tempura, pizza. Oh, and I see it, Colt sees it too. There's the poke bar, and there's a line there, of course. Brooklyn wants to choose our poke. There's a lot to choose from. I'm not sure I could decide, so she's gonna make the decision, and what'd you choose? Poke dynamite ahi. She decided on poke dynamite ahi, and it's green. I'm guessing there might be some wasabi. Okay, and this one, yeah. Since we're in a grocery store, we have this sticker we check out up front, and we also get our utensils up front. There's one more thing we have to grab, though. One other thing that Hawaiians are known for is Spam. It's something that we had never had until we came to Hawaii, but once you're here, you've got to try it. And this is a musubi, which is basically like a big nigiri, sushi-style thing with a slice of ham on top, wrapped with seaweed on top of the rice. Delicious and piping hot. And what is Spam exactly? It's a little bit of a mystery meat as far as I understand. It is canned ham. And if you have a better explanation, please let us know. I'd love to hear it. Oh, it smells so good. Mm. It's like the ocean. I gotta try some of that. I gotta try some of Colt's octopus, and I got way down there to get some rice to go with it. He's right, it smells so much like seaweed. Mmm. Mmm. Great choice, Cole. So the rice is really hot, and then the poke and the octopus on top is cold, so it creates a neat little uh, contrast in your mouth. Awesome. Now we gotta do our dynamite one. So this tuna looks really fresh and awesome, but I'm looking forward to the wasabi taste too. A lot of wasabi flavor, but the spice level is really subtle, so it's not like hot or really pungent like um, like wasabi sometimes is. Just flavorful, flavorful. And the tuna is really good, and there's a ton of sauce, so it's really saucy. I cannot say it's like. So I think Spam is kind of like a fat bologna. Similar taste, maybe similar to a hot dog, but very good. And when you make it into a little sushi bite like this, even better. It's massive though. Mmm, so juicy. A little bit of spice in the rice, sushi style, sesame seeds, and of course that seaweed on there. With all that rice packed in there, this could be a nice light lunch. And it's only like $2.30, so it's a cheap one at that, which makes it very appealing for a lot of the locals. Now, I don't have a recollection of ever trying Spam before, to be honest, uh, but I do have a little bit of a preconceived notion that it's not gonna be good. So I wanna be proved wrong. That's not what I expected at all. It really has like a, a ham taste to it, like Canadian bacon, really salty. It's good. We're gonna have to squeeze more in because this is not our last stop. We have another stop for another treat and a very sweet finale you don't wanna miss. We're actually going to Japan soon, but here in Hawaii, we're getting a Japanese sandwich. And it's not savory, it's full of fruit. Strawberry banana Oreo, yum. Look pretty cool. Yes. I'm excited. I'd never heard of this. I would never think of this to put uh, sweet desserts inside of white bread. It actually looks really good. Mm -hmm. The good bun? Oh, yeah. It tastes like 
strawberries and Nutella. Like exactly that. Well, it's pretty common to have like peanut butter and jelly with slices of banana in there, but that's the big distinction here between those and these. Slicing fruit and sticking it in a sandwich is completely different from taking entire chunks of those fruits and putting them in there. The ones with the oranges in there or whole strawberries or really even an entire banana just cut in half and plopped in there. So there's you're biting through an inch and a half of fruit sometimes on these sandwiches. It's really an interesting combination of flavors and texture. Best sandwich I've ever had in my entire life. Well, it's the best sandwich he's ever had and it's also the last sandwich he's having today. I think that's just about the right amount of calories to get us through the rest of our week here in Hawaii. We've got multiple episodes coming your way with a lot of really cool adventures beyond food. So hopefully you'll hit that subscribe button and follow us along. We're the Lockwoods, Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people.